beautiful people. Today we have Shaman Isabella with us and she's going to teach us everything about soul retrieval. I hope I say it. You said it great. Soul retrieval. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for coming. Thanks and for asking am, me. Yes. So I want to understand like everything about soul retrieval, what it really means and how can that help us to uh, live a better life. I know it's very related with healing, uh, the modality of healing or when we are stuck in life. So how did you get to this concept where everything started for you? Well, that's a loaded question. So <laughs> that's a lot. Um, where can I start? I uh, was, my mom believed in past lives and believed in esoteric spirituality. So I was always familiar with it and knew about it. Energy healing, not so much. Astrology, tarot cards, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But the whole concept of energy healing and soul retrieval and uh, extractions and all this stuff didn't come until I was almost 50. Oh, wow. Yeah. And what was the moment or what happened in your life that connected you with that? Uh, again, my mom. So uh, she had dementia. She'd been in a home for about a year and a half. I knew like that she was coming to me in dream state. She was coming to me and saying, get me out of here. And I would say, how can I get you out of there? I can't get myself out of here. And I was in Idaho getting my master's degree in theater. No concept of a shaman or, or healings or anything. And I had a healing with a shaman over the phone, which I wasn't sure that I even believed in because over the phone seemed crazy. But I was willing to do anything, so I did. I had a soul retrieval with my mom and I from a past life that we promised never to leave each other's sides. Oh, wow. And um, within a month, she transitioned. So that was my first big healing. And I started studying shamanism, and it was Peruvian shamanism. And I, um, I, I can't, I, it changed my life. That is so beautiful, and I want to get in that Peruvian because I don't know if many of you know, I do have an accent, and that is because I come from Bolivia. <laughs> <laughs> that is very close from Peru. And um, we have a mesa here with us today. And I want to learn about your connection with all of that because this gringuita, right, <laughs> is promoting all our ancestral um, traditions. And that when I met her and I knew she does that, it really touched my heart because, yes, and um, it's beautiful to see that um, the Incas and all our traditions are uh, shown in here uh, with uh, Isabella in California, but around the world, and it's very powerful. Um, you know, uh, Monica, I, I love you so much, and from the moment I met you, and your energy, yes. and your beauty, and your wisdom, and I, I, <laughs> near tears because of the gringa, you know, like, if you had told me that I was going to be the blonde, white, Orange County shaman, I would have said, what's a shaman? Like, I, I, what is a shaman? Like, isn't it just Native American or just in the Indian population? I, and no, it's not. And it's all over the world. Correct. And I am a Russian Jew, and I know my roots are in Siberia and Mongolian. Shamanism is a thing. And I had a woman tell me once, watching you work is like watching a Mongolian shaman. You work like I've never, you know, so this idea of me not being allowed to oh, call yeah. myself a shaman or to be put down or that I'm uh, appropriating culture or any of the things that I am so far removed from, I get it, I understand it, and this younger generation is really big with it. I mean, even my daughter said, stop calling yourself a shaman. Oh, no, but th in my... In my point of view, that was beautiful to watch. See, that's what touched me just yeah, now to hear you say that. You know, it's like you rescue our culture and you are wow. proud of showing it, right? And I love that from you. And I have also a friend in Bolivia, Emma, that she is from England, but I haven't met any other person that will promote our culture as well in the way she does. 
and I felt the same when I met you. I love right? that. Thank and you. And when we say the guinguita, it's in a good way, like, you know, it's beautiful. But really, thank you, because I know about mesas. Like, I grew up with all of that. Right? Yeah. It's very yeah. powerful in, in our culture. And I didn't know you do it here in California. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel very blessed that 15 years ago, I turned my home into the Orange County Healing Center dot com. Like I didn't even didn't even know what a dot com was and built my mesa. So for those of you out there that don't know what a mesa is, it's a medicine bag. It's a bag of rocks. And all of these rocks have gone through my issues. So in my training program, I teach, you know, you take your stones, you create your mesa out of your stones, and each time you bring three stones for each different direction, which I was taught to through the Four Winds Society and Dr. Alberto Violdo, is this way of creating yourself as a medicine body, that your body is a mesa, that your world is a mesa, that you open up the directions, you go call in the winds of the south and the west and the north and the east and Pachimama and Grandfather Sky and, and you bring in this energy and love for the planet because the mountains have been listening to our stories since the beginning of time. So no matter what culture you come from, no matter what your religious belief system is, this earth, our mother, needs us now more than ever. And if you can break away from all the judgments mm -hmm. and grab a rock <laughs> and build a mesa, you'll have a better life. I mean, that's what yes. I And remember, like, you could be like this guinguita that we are calling you today, the beautiful guinguita, <laughs> but your soul, your soul has not ethnicity, right. you know? Our souls are pure. Yeah, light. Yes. That's what I always say, I'm a shaman of the light. Like I teach other people to see their own light, to feel their own energy, mm -hmm. to feel their own beauty. And, and with soul retrieval, so it's not like you need to retrieve your soul, okay? You didn't lose your soul, your soul is there. But what I believe is you get a f what I call fragmented soul part. Mm -hmm. So pieces of your light throughout time. And you don't have to believe in past lives. I mean, you can... B believe in nothing but your light, right? And feel sort of like disconnected from your light or unable to manifest the way you want to manifest mm -hmm. or, or feel like out of alignment with your soul. Mm -hmm. It's purpose, okay? And that will manifest like through illness, right? It can manifest in illness, but it could be as simple as money problems, relationship issues, mm -hmm. depression, All anxiety. All that people have about money, right. right? I don't know why money is not flowing into my life. Right. Okay. So that will be a symptom that we need to retrieve our souls? And retrieve the fragmented life, the, fragmented the, life. the piece uh, that is out of vibration. So I always mm -hmm. say you are but one vibrational note in the universe. Oh. What frequency mm -hmm. do you want to vibrate at? Oh, I like that. Right? Yeah. So, so each time you do a soul retrieval, you're regaining a piece of your light to help you vibrate at the highest frequency possible. Because that's really what we want, right? We want good vibes. Mm -hmm. We want to feel that, good. How that look like when you did that with your mom? Because she was with us. Can you tell us that? Or is it oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm an open book. I mean, you can go on my YouTube channel. <laughs> it's like story after story of me. But um, with my mom, it, we were two little girls under a table during the war holding hands, promising never to leave each other's side. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I did not want to break that. Mm -hmm. I did not want to ever let go of my mom, mm -hmm. but I realized I was keeping her stuck mm -hmm. by continuing with that contract. So that's a past life soul contract that you make with somebody. And sometimes it can keep them stuck or you stuck. So I, I said, okay, something inside of me, even though it was my first healing and I never had one before something inside of me knew you have to say yes to breaking this contract and letting your mom go free so I did and like I said it was it was painless it was very, once my emotional ego centric self got out of it yeah, it was know, painless it's very interesting because there is sometimes different philosophies or theories but in quantum healing uh, hypnosis therapy like past life or other dimensions we do the same Right, because there is contracts, like you said, that are holding people in this planet. 
and many yeah. times manifest uh, Alzheimer's or when people really start getting very sick, very old, but they don't leave because somehow we are keeping them with us. And, and, and unintentionally, right? Correct. Like, Correct. Not on purpose. And that's what my mom had was Alzheimer's. And sometimes yeah. it's how they taught us to love in this planet, right? If you love someone, you, you want that they stay, but that is not always how it has to be. It should be the opposite, right? Yeah. Um, then we say, go, you know, reincarnate, have a new life, have a new uh, existence. But yeah, so soul retrieval, what I have found, I wasn't taught present day soul retrieval. I uh, had a healing by a, a woman who did something similar mm -hmm. uh, to like an inner child work, right? Mm -hmm. And then I went home and I was working with clients and I realized like this is really powerful to do a present day soul retrieval, oh, wow. to go back in time, mm -hmm. not to a past life, because not everybody believes in past lives, right? right. And we're, it's all interconnected anyway. So it really doesn't matter if a past life, this life. But if you go back in time to an issue that happened to you mm -hmm. in this lifetime and you retrieve that part of yourself, your life will change. Now, I have found mm -hmm. that I just did the Mindfulness Expo in Anaheim, right? Mm -hmm. It's my third year in a row doing it. And there are maybe 50 people in the room. This year, there were close to 80 people in the room. I took all 80, 70, whatever it was, people on a soul retrieval. Oh, wow. And everyone got a healing. And everyone got to retrieve a part of themselves. That's powerful. That's crazy. Wow. But it's fantastic yes. because it can be done like... You know, and as I'm talking to you now, I'm like, well, let's do for one for you right now. And then I'm like, well, how do we do one for the entire audience? What we could do it live one time, or we do the entire thing all at one time, because it's just a journey back to a moment in time in your life that you still go back to, and ruminate over and feel stuck in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can see it. You want to do it? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to do it. I don't even know that it, I don't know. I mean, we don't have to. I'm like, how would we do that right now with, in front of everyone? I'm open. Um, do you have, well, I mean, that would be the first question, right? Do you have something in your life? And you don't have to tell everybody what yeah. it is, right? I do. You have something that you go back to and you ruminate over Not or you that think I about. I go back to, I think, is a contract that I have clear it has ended. Um, but I think it's not as clear for the other person. Well, we have no power over the other, other person. person. I know. But if you're still courted. Correct. There is something that's, in me. It's, that's possible. Yes. So maybe yes. rather than... Uh, Soul yeah. retrieval is a cord cutting ceremony. Oh. So a cord cutting ceremony is a whole separate thing. And we'll do that privately. So we'll continue with, with, uh, with, with this and see where we go. But, you know, so all of these things, I also do ancestral healing. So there's Ooh, also times wow. yeah. where you're, it's not a soul retrieval. It's not a cord cutting. It's actually in your DNA, yeah. embedded in your ancestors. And the hierarchy, right? That we have to respect. I learned that. I did something similar that was family constellations. I oh, I remember that, yeah. yeah. But what I learned is that it's so important because there is a hierarchy that comes with your ancestral beings that you have to be in harmony with, right? Oh, is interesting. Is that the same or no? Um, no, I mean, maybe. Okay. Maybe. What, for me, what it, how it shows up in ancestral healing is sometimes there is a, a tube. So instead of a cord, it's an ancestral tube. And the ancestors are feeding off that tube. And I look at that sometimes as addiction or money problems, again, relationship issues, again, like trouble with men or women or whatever. So instead of a cord, it's an actual tube. So we send white light forgiveness and love through the tube to the ancestors, and then we cut that. We, we do a little ceremony of burning, and, and we cut that tube. And are you able to watch? Are you a like because we have different ways of relating with all of this. How it manifests for you? You can hear, you can I have a little bit of each, but my strongest is feeling. I feel it. 
I, I, I know, I feel it, and then sometimes I'll see it, and then sometimes an ancestor will show up. So they'll need a healing, so then we do a healing for the ancestor, we do a healing for the person. Uh, it's, it's wild. Sometimes a dead person will show up, and I guess I have mediumship capabilities that I've just never really gone down that road. It's not been my thing. My thing is moving heavy energy. I love moving heavy energy, helping the ancestors, helping you like clear your ancestral past. So, because I believe we're in a time of instant karma. So why drag the karmic line with you? We've been stuck in a karmic loop and you can see it right now on the planet with, I mean, we're right here, right? With the- Can you answer what I am thinking right now to ask you? It's like- <laughs> Wait, that was my question. I should well, give you time to ask it because once I start, I can't stop. No, because I wanted to ask you that. Do you feel that right now, because of everything that is going in the planet, like people need more than ever to heal? How oh, is that gosh. like coming to you that are such a powerful healer? It is. Well, thank you for that. I, I, I just see myself as a person. But, uh, you know, if you see that in me, then you have that in you. That's it. That's what I tell everyone. Like, they're all like, you've got, yes, okay, but so do you. So, so I think that what's happening on the planet right now is so heavy. It's so challenging for people to uh, see their light. And so thank you for doing this show to help people see their light because you're such a bright light. And, and with all the darkness, all I can say is, Turn it off. Don't focus your attention on it. Don't speak about it. Don't have it playing in the background all the time. I turned off the news over 20 years ago. Uh, I heard the commercials subliminally telling me I was sick. I was watching the posters and all. What's the new thing for me now is I realize how many accident posters are on the freeway. It is manifesting an accident for you. It is crazy how uh, how the world is, especially in America. And I, I, I love America, but Europe is just such a cleaner place. So if we could, and I mean that energetically, I mean that, uh, go government, I mean, I know that there are a lot of corrupt governments, but our food system, the way we're treated, it's a very interesting time to be aware of everything and to not focus on the negative. Mm -hmm. Stop focusing on the negative because wherever, Thought goes, attention follows. So wherever your thought goes, your attention's gonna go to, you're gonna manifest. Even if you're over here doing all your healing work and all your manifestation work and all your great work, and at the end of the night, you're watching oh. the, the negativity and talking about the negativity. The, the universe doesn't know the difference. Yeah, I think it's beautiful that you mentioned that because I haven't watched news for the last 30 years or more. And I think if we can teach one thing today also will be yeah. like you can live your life without knowing what's going on out there. Because if there is something that is going to affect you personally, you will find out. Yes, you'll know. And if then, it's something yeah. important, you'll know. Yeah. yeah, and then you can act on it. But why are you going to be getting like news and news of things that could happen, that are happening, but they are not related with your own evolution? And that is just not gonna take you out of your path, but it's gonna not gonna help you to focus in what really is important for you to keep so going. So true, right? so true. And the whole scrolling thing now, right? Is like it's dopamine. So for anyone who took a psychology class and remembers the Pavlov's theory, this is Pavlov's theory. This is the dog going and the, you know going to get fed. We are getting dopamine hits constantly. I am a huge TikToker. You can find me on TikTok. I love TikTok. I'm not great at it, but I love it. But I also love turning it off and knowing like, oh, okay, I am, this is, I want to see the Jerry and Esther Hicks. I want to watch the Abrahams. I want to see the positive stuff. I want to hear positive music. I want to feel, you know, enveloped in the love. If you can envelop yourself in a loving vibration, you will heal the planet. You will heal yourself. Ooh, that, that, that was beautiful. So, coming at this moment on Earth, 
to help heal the world, right? That's a big job. And we decided <laughs> to incarnate at this time. Yeah, so many us. did. So many did. Yeah, right? you did for yes. sure. <laughs> if you are listening to this, <laughs> you did for sure. So, um, do you think? How important do you think is your job? Like how? powerful do you think you really are in helping to change all of this and to improve uh, and how it manifests for you gosh. are you kind of drained with so much work or are you really empowered to be here right now that's a great question i was empowered for 15 years and covid hit and i stopped uh -huh. i was like i i cannot uh not that I've stopped now, I'm not, but I, I took that time. I took the COVID time. I took that year off. I watched the planet. I watched how beautiful the earth with no cars on it began to develop. I watched the beauty of, I wasn't watching the horror films of the people dying, bless their souls for choosing to come to the earth and be a catalyst for change. Mm -hmm. But I watched the earth and how powerful it is if we just stop if we had like off days where nobody was allowed to go to work and nobody was allowed on the freeway and everybody had to stop to let the earth replenish itself, there has to be a change in the tide. There has to be. You know, I took that group of 17 people to Egypt two years later, so, you know, I did begin again and I, I am working, but my mission now is not so much one-on-one -on -one with people. It's these groups. It's doing these large groups, speaking to large groups, helping people see their light and being able to heal more people at one time. Because I would notice with the one-on-one -on -one healing, yes, I'd hit a lot of ancestors. Yes, they actually had enough in them. I could see it going underneath the earth and waking up other people to their light, to their ability to heal. To I'd watch my students and I'd be working with one person and I would see it go trickle down throughout the vibration and people would wake up. And from 2012 till now, Oh my gosh, the amount of healers that are on the planet doing their work, the amount of people, not that that's all me. I didn't do that by myself. People have been doing this since the beginning of time. I just chose in the last 15 years to wake up, do it, and, and give all I can give. But then my love of my life came back into my life in 2020. She just got so married. I just got married. So, you know, you have to balance work, life, energy right that's yeah. very important because i was talking with another lady the other day that she does the akashic records and how we balance like being between work right and really also enjoying the experience of 3d the human experience because we also came to enjoy this planet right, right? and what this planet and this dimension brings for all of that and touch and being able to <laughs> we come down so we can touch people like you can fly around up there all, you know, all the, all you want, but you come here for a reason. So find out what that reason is. Well, it's finding love or refinding your beloved story. Oh, God, you. I love this man so much. And I think it's important because I know many of, not many, I saw of you that have um, lived a life and at this moment are wondering if love is coming for you. It's coming. But you have to, and I know everyone says this, love yourself. Love how? And then you say, okay, well, okay, Isabella, I did, I'm from the 80s. I did the inner child work. Okay, I know. I know I did it all too. Because, how do you love yourself more? Well, how, how do you do that? How do you do that? I, how do I love my child? I don't love to know how to love my inner child. Listen to what you're saying to yourself. Listen to how you're speaking to yourself. If it's negative, ask yourself, whose voice is that? That is not my voice. Is it my mother's voice? Is it my father's voice? Is it my siblings? Is it the kids at school teasing me? This is a learned behavior. You did not come to this planet with a negative mind. You did not come to this planet born into sin. That is a lie. Sorry, I love Christians with all my heart but that's not true. You were not born into sin. You were born into beauty. Alberto Violdo, my teacher, always says, it's time to create a new myth. So what is your new myth? My new myth is Eve took the apple 
ate the fruit and said, mmm, this is good. Go out and plant more trees. You know, it's like change the narrative, change the narrative in your mind. And this is how you begin to love yourself. You love yourself by telling yourself, I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I do. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. How about you? Yeah, I love myself. <laughs> but what part of your soul, like was, in, like I don't want to say lost because you taught us already in the beginning of today. It's fragmented. Yeah. So. What part of your soul was fragmented so love had to re-encounter you? Oh my gosh, so many. Because that can help. Yes, right? absolutely. I, I had, I've had so many soul retrievals. I can't even tell you. I, have, I, I, I'm still getting them. Like it's like it's a new thing. It's a, we're an onion. We're getting another layer, another layer. Mm -hmm. I was raped, and twice, and once by five of my guy friends growing up. It wasn't you know intercourse because we were too young, but uh, five guys jumped me. Later in, in my teens, uh, by gunpoint, three guys pulled the gun, pulled the train on me. So there was a missing large piece of myself, right? It is my story. I'm now, there's no victim here. <laughs> I know for a fact, I did something pretty gnarly <laughs> in a past life to those guys. And so I forgive myself for whatever I did to them. Whatever I did to them in a past life, I, I, I get myself off the hook. Whatever they did to me in this life, I get myself off the hook. So this way, right, in this way of reclaiming your power, reclaiming your light, helps you fall more in love with yourself. When I first started doing the healings, I did not believe it. People were getting up and they felt fantastic. I was like, this is crazy. I, I don't have any power. Like, what, what is happening? How do they feel better? So I had a healing. I had a 14-year-old shaman boy that I was in a past life that died young and did not trust his power. And so I got to bring him back. And every time I did a healing, the only thing I was allowed to say was, good job. Good job. And that little boy grew up in my system. And I got that part of my healing capacity and soul back. And each time I've done it, it's brought back a new, more empowered part of myself. And now I'll, I'll be 64 next month. No. <laughs> no. Wow. And I thought I would die at 30 because in back in the day, in the 70s, we said, you know, anybody over 30 is the establishment and the man and down with the man. And I would be dead by the time I was 30. And boy, did I try. I did. I did try to be dead. But I'm not. I'm here <laughs> talking to you. You had a bigger purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's very interesting also. Everything that you say is interesting. I am repeating that sentence every time that you talk. But it is because when you said there was this shaman young boy that little by little I connect more and more, that is what today we understand as a quantum jump, right? Because there is a version of our self that is the shaman, that is the architect, whatever you want to find. Your soul is living that, those lives too. So when you are able to tap in one of those lives, you little by little can bring that person and you can apply that on everything. You can mm -hmm. apply it to regain your health because there is the healthier version of yourself living a life. Oh, like yeah. That. Oh, right? yeah. And that, I think you were... That and NAD. <laughs> we need to get an NAD commercial going here because, man, that stuff is amazing. <laughs> yes, there is a lot of tools that we can use and are important for our human body as well. But, but if you don't get the spiritual down, correct. yeah, you got to get your energy body intact. Yes, I mean, if I told, I had a healing with Alberto a million years ago, 14 years ago, probably. And he said to me, I do not see your story in your field at all. Ooh, wow. I don't see your story. And I had not, I just started doing this. It wasn't like soul retrieval got it out of there. It was... The years that I had spent, you know, the 20 years I had spent pulling my life together, doing the work, doing the journaling, doing the, you know, I love myself, doing the, the work of releasing the addiction, releasing the trauma, releasing the issues that I had chosen for myself, 
there was no victims. I chose to have the, the, the life that I had. But now for people to go, I don't, I don't see that. I can't imagine you in prison. I can't imagine you on drugs. I can't imagine you. But I know that I had to have that experience in order to be the healer I am today. Amen. That's exactly. See, you take the word from <laughs> me. Like we're so connected today. It's like unbelievable. But that's what I wanted to say. You can not be a healer if you don't heal yourself first. Right? You cannot yeah. teach weight loss if you didn't lose the weight. It's yeah, it's more difficult. I mean, you probably can, but it's more <laughs> difficult for you. Yes, but that that compassion that you can Gain. feel, right, to other yeah. person because you have experienced so many things. I, but I also think, especially with the new generation, I think there are some slight, light souls that are coming that are my already here that they can do this work without having to experience the crystal souls the crystal starlight babies is what i call them the rainbow crystal children my husband says to me you did not need to experience what you experienced to be able to do what you do isabella you did not have to do that and and it's interesting i think he might be right you know like if you tell me that two years ago i will tell you yes because i always promote that we can learn by love not just by suffering right and then the other day I was having this beautiful conversation with Francisco Jara that um, he talks about the dark night of the soul. And wow, like he shifts my way of thinking because he says all great teachers in history, right? They had that time where you really go deep and you go inside and you have to come back and raise a boat, right? Yeah, yeah. So I... I know it's a duality. I, I, I believe this also for this generation, but I don't know about the next. Yeah. Because I wonder if the next generation and, and the kids that are coming now have enough of this in their past lives and enough knowledge in their spirits where they don't have to suffer. They can just yeah. start to create the new earth now. Because yeah. we're running out of time, man. Uh, I'm sorry, cancel, cancel. But, you know, it's, uh, we're going neither one way or another, so. Where do you want to be? That's the big question, right? But what is important is if we really want to go to fifth, sixth, seventh, any dimension we can go, you have to heal. Yeah. You cannot take all the baggage of other lives or other generations with you. And I think what is important to know is the courage that you have of healing today is breaking that change. Yeah. For your breaking daughter. that karmic loop for sure. For sure breaking that karmic loop. And that I think gives you that sense of at least I feel like like very accomplished. Like it's like a, a, a beautiful feeling. Like I don't have the right word to describe, but you did it. You were the one in your family that had the courage to do that. Well, you were the one in your family that chose to come here to and, do that. and do it because it's not easy. It's yeah. not easy. And, but you're in a different world now. I mean, even 12 years ago, like when I started the Orange County Healing Center, I, I, it, it was, uh, there was nothing here. There was no, I mean, there was the Learning Light Foundation. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> like in Fullerton anyway, yeah. you know. But who comes, who's ready to do that soul retreat? Who can come to you and say, we do it? I mean, anyone can come. I, mostly it's people, they, they are introduced, therapists are starting to tell their clients to come to me, which is a wild thought. But, you know, a therapist will go, I've worked with you on this issue for 10 years. You need a shaman. You need to go find somebody that can move this energy. And that's why I say like one healing with me is like 10 years of therapy. It is. Because in one session, you can, you can reclaim a lot of your And what happens self. with that idea? There is some people that say, oh, shaman could be like dangerous, right? There are dark shamans. There are dark people. There are dark healers. There are people that are very specific to one thing. People call me for entity removal. I do not do that work. People call me for cursing, removing curses. I don't do that work anymore. I used to. 
I, I'm uh, more interested in balancing and aligning your spirit to hold more of your own light. This is your container. This is your temple. You can only hold as much as you can hold until you can expand your container. If people are ready to change, you ask who comes to me, people that are ready to change. They want to have a different way of seeing themselves and their light. So I teach people to look at things from a bird's eye view, to shift your perception around your living situation, uh, to, to, you know, it's, it's a desire to learn and grow, and the old modalities just aren't working anymore. So do you have those are the type of people that want to go. Do you have a story from one of your clients that really touched you, Suzanne, and that really oh, speaking yeah. to you? Do you yeah. want to share it with us? I have a lot, but I have one particular who ended up being a student. Gosh, I'm so emotional today. And it touched me. She came and she had a gun ready to kill herself. And she told me, she had told her husband, I'm, I'm, I cannot live this way any longer. I'm either going to go see this person or I'm going to come home and die. And uh, she had been in a um, tr very traumatic bus accident as a child in a school bus. And her friend died next to her. And it uh, ruined her body. It really, it, she, she spent years in surgery, years in pain. And she came to me crying. And I did, uh, I found the dead friend in her vibration. I healed the dead friend, moved her out. I cleared this woman. She got up and went into the bathroom and threw up and came back and said, I'm different. I don't feel the same. I don't want to kill myself. So that, like, and she stayed with me for a long time, and she learned the craft, and blessings to wherever you are, sweet girl. Um, but, you know, I had carried a dead husband in my vibration for 20 years. And Marcella Lobos, who's now Alberto's wife, she did my healing with my uh, mom. The next healing was with the dead husband. I'd had uh, liver biopsy. I almost died. I had four units of blood in my belly, and I was in ICU. And I came out, and I wasn't really healing. And I called her for another healing. And uh, I said, I think my dead husband, who died of cancer with uh, bleeding uh, through his belly, I could see. I was reliving the trauma. And she said, oh, no, no, Miss Isabella. She's Chilean. Oh, no, no, we must honor the dead. We must make an altar. You need to get a photo. I'm like, no way. I was a battered wife. I'm not bringing that. No way. And then again, like with my mom, I realized I had to say, OK, this man is was a big part of my life and uh, died next to me. So I'm willing. And she extracted him. I got up. I threw up. And uh, he was finally gone. And um, bless his soul. Hopefully he's doing better wherever he's at. But, you know, so I had firsthand proof of soul retrieval. I had firsthand proof of extraction. I had firsthand proof of things. So it wasn't like I was doing things that I hadn't already experienced. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't so far out or wild to me. I was like, well, of course, there's a dead person stuck to you. You died next to them. Or, you know, they. They, you know, when you, when people die unconsciously, people die unconsciously. What do you mean by that? Uh, people die uh, unconsciously. They, they, suicide is huge in an unconscious death, but they, they die and they don't go into their own light. They go into yours or they go into the house or they go and they hang out or they have unfinished business and they are here. What I do is I shine my light above my head and I go, you go here into your own light. You have, everyone has that light. Or they were evil and they don't know that they have the light or whatever their story is. So the way to guide them into their own light is to shine your own light as bright as you can. And then, of course, I have techniques and my rattle and my crystal and I move and whatever. But it's like a moment to whoosh, get you into your own vibration, get you into your own higher self. And then you're like not dying unconsciously. You're consciously making the choice to go into your life, into a higher dimension. Uh, and that's a story for another day. But <laughs>
That's a lot. Yeah, but what I am understanding is that your husband has died and it was in your energy field, right? So you had to kind of forgive him first? Oh, to yeah. To your life so you can... Oh, yeah. Well, I had done... You have to realize he died. I was... He was 20 years older than me. I was 26 when he died, 27. I carried him around. 31, I got my life together. I carried him around. So from like 26 to 46... I'd been carrying him around. I knew. I knew he was there. He was in my dreams. I just, I had a psychic tell me once. I walked into her uh, apartment to get a psychic reading, and she goes, so who's the dead guy? <laughs> I go, oh, that would be my dead husband. I, I don't know what to do with him. She goes, well, I could put him in a room for six months, but he's pretty strong, so I, I can't do anything after six months. I go, well, that's cool. Can you put him in a room for six months because he's exhausting? You know, but I just, you learn to live like people who know, you know. People who are out there who are living with dead people, you know, you know, you're like, all right, I just learned to live my life. But so what happens with this is coming to ask you right now, parent that lose kids, right? Uh, That's how yeah. Right? I I just live. worked on somebody who son had died and it'd been ten years and she could not get unstuck. And I was like, your child needs to go so you've got to let let the let's break the cord the child will still be with you but it won't be corded to you and you won't be carrying the child mm -hmm. through this lifetime it's gone it wants to go now is it come loud so this is also my theories right because i'm not a psychic so i don't know but my theory is some is an actual being still here some is a memory some is a part of it. Mm -hmm. Just a, you're, you're, you're not allowing that dead person to fully have all of their light and power and go. You're still holding on to that fragmented soul part. And that's what you were asking me at the beginning. Well, how do I let that person go if they're not willing to let it go? Right? Mm -hmm. So, and like, a, especially a dead child that's moved on, how do you help the parent let you go when you're like trying to evolve and move forward and? get reincarnated and come back as a grandchild. So I don't know. I'm not a psych. I'm not a medium. But I do have some tendencies, and I can feel the energy pull. So mostly I can get parents to say, well, of course I want my child free. Mm. Of course I want my child Ooh. to be free. It's about freedom. Yeah. And so then I'm able to unwind it, break the cord, bring peace to the family. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> But I'm grateful I have the gift, you know, but I'm there grateful. It's again about unconditional love, right? And when you love, you let them free. Yeah. And that's sometimes the parents they forget, right? Just in a small transitions, like I had just like in the last years that my kids like flew from the house. Yeah. And you, you see it, right? Oh, yeah. Like you try, like your brain. Come home and do your laundry. <laughs> I'll cook for you. Come home. I don't I'll cook for you. You can just watch TV if you want. <laughs> it's like no mountain. <laughs> I'll cook for you. No, but that's it's, true. It's that those jobs or small things that we say without thinking, that's they are true. keeping them in our energy. Right? Well, our words are spells. So you know the good vibes cards, which I didn't bring, but I have a deck of cards called the good vibes in English and in Spanish, and they're positive affirmations. And the, there's a card that says your words are spells, your thoughts are things. So if every time you're speaking, it's a spell, and you've said something that you don't want, all you have to do is say, cancel, cancel. Yeah. Cancel, cancel. This is what I want instead. No, I didn't mean that. No, universe, don't bring that to me. Cancel, cancel. Cancel, cancel. Yeah. yeah. And also, this is another one, on, since we're talking about death a lot, uh, I help women get pregnant because... That was... No! Oh, my God! Yes, <laughs> yes, because I had some people that have come with... Um, they all had abortions. Yes. Or they have lost babies. And yes. And they're a little stuck there. So I wanted to know your point of view on that. <laughs> I, it was like, <laughs> wow. So... so miscarriages the energy is still stuck in the womb mm. 
So you have to clear the womb and allow that spirit to be free from the womb. Miscarriages, abortions, uh, all of that, all of that. And, the, and I have had women get pregnant. And that's something that you do. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then we do a despacho. So a despacho is a Peruvian prayer, mm -hmm. which you know despachos. And we create this Peruvian prayer bundle to offer to the gods. We put it in a fire and, and then ask for our prayers to be answered. It's a lot. Yes, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> you got a lot out of me today. You got a lot. Do you think so? It's good. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, because it's so like, um, I feel like very like deep right now. I'm trying to like, feel the energy and the power of, sh although I understood shamanism and have never really had a, such a deep conversation and understanding how similar in certain ways and how connected is with other type of healings today that we are right. experimenting, like other lives, other dimensions. Akashic other records, uh, yes. crystal healings. Uh, and it's more like what do you resonate right. with, right? And you can dabble, you know, maybe like, well, I want to do this yeah, right now. Because and healing now also this right is now. many times we have, I myself, I have done so many things. Right, and yeah. it's uh, like I feel my soul is like curious, but at the same time, at certain points of my life, different things have resonated, and I am the type like when I listen and it's like wow, like I want to do that, it's because your soul is ready to find that answer. Yeah, and what what they say, you know, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. Yes, it's very true. And like Isabella was saying. Like your soul is like an onion, right? And we are going to, because we keep evolving. It's not like, oh, you're going to go from A to B and you are in B and you are happy forever, ever after. No. No. And, and, you know, stuff happens. Things come up. You have this, you know, next onion layer to let go of and this next part to step into. And, you know, I've been taking people around the world for uh, 15 years now and, I thought 2020 was it, and Egypt was never going to happen, and then it did, and now we're planning Bali for October. And Tell me more about Bali. Whoa, it. I'm so excited for Bali. So I went to Bali. It was my first real vacation for me. I had been taking people around the world and taking people to Peru and doing all this travel, and then I was like, I need something for myself. I need something just for Isabella. So my girlfriend and I went to Bali. Oh, my God, I loved it. it I just everybody's praying all the time everybody's bowing in the market when you buy your food they bow to you they, they're in the street making they make these little things and they put it in the street to make the cars safe i mean i know i moved away from the mic but they put them in the street to make the cars safe it, it's like the most spiritual beautiful place and i have found a jungle retreat center that I can have the entire thing. There are 10 rooms. Oh, wow. And I can have the entire space to myself. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to go on a tour. I don't want to leave. I want to come nurture your soul. I think that's going to be the name of it nurturing is nurturing your soul. soul. Yeah, that was powerful right now. Nurturing yourself or nurturing your soul. Like, come Sit. I have a Balinesian cooking class. I've got a fire dance. I've got a water ceremony. So those are the three planned activities to go out. But inside, I can do despachos. I can have my own. There's my own fire pit. There's a huge pool. I just want to lie by the pool. I mean, it's fantastic. Because normally, Peru, we're on the go. I mean, Peru, I take people to as many places as I, I can take them. Machu Picchu, Ollantaytambo, Pisac. Cusco, San Blas, you know, I'm like, I'm already tired. <laughs> yeah, I'm exhausted. I mean, you know, it's fantastic and I love it. And, but I try to show people, oh, and of course, plant medicine. So, oh, what are you doing from plant medicine? We do San Pedro, Huachuma. Yeah. It's a lot of people talks about ayahuasca and I did bufo personally, but yeah, San I saw Pedro that. is very uh, known also in yeah. Bolivia comes yeah. from there. St. Peter, they call it, it's Huachuma, but when the conquistadors came and tried to take over, they, when they drank it, they said it was like the gates of heaven. St. Peter had opened the gates of heaven oh, and that's that why they call it San Pedro. Yeah. 
So, but I love like what you, the name of your retreat is nurturing yourself, right? Yeah. Because I think there is where we start healing. Right? Yeah. It's going to be a very healing retreat. It's, uh, and it's in Ubud. So Ubud is a place where you can probably walk out of the retreat center and go and explore on your own. And, you know, because a lot of people ask me, do I have to do everything? Because Egypt was a lot too. So we did everything, trip down the Nile, all of the pyramids, all of the sacred sites. I mean, we went to uh, everywhere we could. And so this one, I'm like, no, you don't have to do anything. You can <laughs> just do a few things with me and go hang out on your own. And that is it's really a, it's going to be a beautiful retreat. It's on October. October. What? And we're in 2024, by the way, because <laughs> you'll see yeah. this later and go, there's no retreat. <laughs> So what would be your message for our audience today? <sighs> it's funny, what's coming is take care. Take care, you know. How do you live in the moment? How do you care for the moment? How do you nurture the moment? How do you nurture your soul? How do you not rush through this existence? Because we're all in such a hurry to die. We're in such a hurry to die. That's how I, we're in such a hurry to go where? Do what? Accomplish what? Do what? Go where? See who? But go, go, even me. I mean, like I'm already in Bali in October, right? Now, how do I stay in this moment with you? Sending love, sending light with Monica, with her beauty and her light and her love and her gifts and her business. And how do you enjoy your existence fully right. right now? It's only way is in the moment. The only way you're going to enjoy your existence fully is not by the new car, new house, new dress, new whatever. It's now right here taking a breath. So let's all take a breath together and out and anchoring in this moment, anchoring in this time, expanding your consciousness, expanding this time, expanding this moment to last for as long as you want it to until the next moment, which is now, because that moment's gone, to existing. I think that's my message. That's that was beautiful. You know what I've been learning lately that came to me when you were talking many people and it's again trying to go to the next destination right to find the journey and I learned that it doesn't matter the destination or the journey but the company in every moment I love that because imagine your journey alone right you it's can the be, company it's the company it could be you sometimes because you have to love yourself but I think it's so beautiful, all the souls that come with you. And I being in this stage of my life, I am valuing that more than anything else. And you know what they say, you end up being like the five people you hang out with. <laughs> so who are you hanging out with? <laughs> who are you giving your energy to, right? Here's another one I'll leave you with. If you are an overgiver, which mm -hmm. I was, and I tend to be still, cancel, cancel, don't want to be. Boundaries are really important. Mm -hmm. But if you are that kind of person, at the end of the day, or you have a job that's very taxing, at the end of the day, I want you to say, I claim all of my energy back to me now, clean and clear. I release anyone else's energy that I'm holding on to. That's very beautiful. I claim all of my energy back to me now, clean and clear. I release anyone else's energy I'm holding on to. If you have teenagers that you're struggling with, if you have people in your life that you are just giving, giving, giving to and worrying about, worry is a cord, stop worrying, it's not benefiting anybody, and you send, you got this energy. You got this. You got this. You got this. I don't got it for you. You got it for you. Because if you think you got it for somebody else, it's spiritually inappropriate to take on that energy because you're keeping them from being able to stand in their own power. Ooh, that was direct to me because I had for many, many, many years, my identity was built around being the one that takes care of everyone. I grew up with that and um, 
at the point, and I adore my mom, and I have done like family um, constellations where I keep the organize the hierarchy of my family again, but to the point that she will call me on Mother's Day to say Happy Mother's Day to me, and I will say, I'm not your mom. I need a mom. <laughs> yeah, right? it's true. Happy Mother's Day to you, mom. Yes, but what I like that really touches me because I did had to get conscious because we all have an identity that we have built around how we grew up and who we were in, in our families, right? So saying you got this because, you know, I will always show them how to do it or help them to do it. Or do it for them. Or do it for them, <laughs> right? Sometimes it's easier because they are not going to do it in the way you do it, right? Yeah, they're not going to do it right. <laughs> But going to that point, and I think that's beautiful lesson, right? You got this. You got this. I'm going to practice that today and in the days that are following. No, thank you for that. You know, there's sometimes people don't realize that one sentence can change a lot. If you really listen and you are able to, to kind of play around your own personality and your own beliefs that they need to shift. If we are growing, if we are changing, if we are trying to become the next version of ourselves, that's yeah. how we do it. And I am not perfect. Mm. I, I'm far, far, far from perfect. I am human. Yeah. I am human. I'm doing the best I can. I forgive myself. I work at not being guilty or feeling guilty about the past, and I move forward every day. Yeah, and I don't think the perfect person exists. No. You know, but we all are here in planet Earth right now, learning our lessons. But sometimes the person that is next to you got something that when you listen to that, bam, aha moment, right? And then you realize you can take that. Those are the things that we can take from other people and constantly evolve. But thank you to my beautiful Isabella. Thank I you for having me. So glad. It was so fun. I'm so glad we did this. Yes. Thank you so much for everything that uh, has decided to watch this. And if you want to find Isabella, how do they find you? Shamanisabella.com is my website. Really, the easiest way is an email, shamanisabella at gmail.com. And anywhere, Shaman Isabella on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. I'm just not a huge social media person, and I'm not paying somebody to run it for me, and so I pop on here and there. If you go to my TikTok, find the one that has 70,000 oh, wow. views <laughs> on money. For oh. some reason, that one went crazy. And... Uh, so and bless the heart of the 200 people that are out there still watching because every time I put a video, there is still 200. But what the heck I did about that money? All I taught was whatever goes out comes right back. Whatever goes out comes right back. That's all I said really is whatever goes out comes right back because it's true and it's the universe and that's how they work. But with your money, you blow on your money and you spend it and you say whatever goes out comes right back. And I've been living that way and proving that to myself for 15 years. No, that is beautiful, and that reminds me, if you haven't subscribed, please do, because also yes. this message, if you like, comment, or subscribe, I'm learning this with myself, will be shown to more people, and more people will benefit. Thank you for the yeah. gift of your time today with us. I love you so much, Panika. Thank, thank you, you for having me. And thank you, everybody that has watched.